Okay, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about how you apply F equals MA across streamlines. Now recall that when we derived the Bernoulli equation, what we were considering, right, was the surface forces due to pressure and the gravitational body forces that were sufficient to drive a fluid particle to accelerate along a streamline. That is, in the direction in which its velocity is our vector is already pointing. In the present consideration, the present uh, application, we're looking at the pressure gradients normal to a streamline combined with the gravitational body forces normal to the streamline, sufficient to cause that same fluid particle to deviate from a straight path. Right? It creates radial acceleration and causes curvature in the flow. So what we're looking at here in this image is flow, which is entering from the left and moving towards the right. Uh, between points A and B, we can assume that the flow is represented by streamlines that are entirely horizontal. That is, there is no curvature in the flow between points A and B. So these points here, 1 and 2, both lie on these straight streamlines. As the flow progresses from left to right, it encounters a hump over which it has to flow. And between points C and D, we can assume that the streamlines of the flow describe circular arcs. So what we're tasked to find in this problem is the pressure variations between two sets of points. So we're seeking the pressure variation. Oops, that's an O between first points 1 and 2 and second points 3 and 4. So diving right into it, let's begin with the pressure variation between points 1 and 2. All right, in our consideration of, uh, of, of F equals MA across streamlines, then integrated in the normal direction, right, we arrived at the expression that P plus rho GZ plus rho times the integral of V squared times the, over the radius of curvature integrated in the normal direction is equal to a constant. All right, so looking at the flow at points 1 and 2, there are a few simplifications we can make. First of all, let's make the assumption now that we are considering gauge pressure. That is that both P or that P is always going to be measured relative to the ambient atmospheric pressure, which means that the pressure at 2, right, is 0. At the same time, the flow at both points 1 and 2, right, has already been stated to be horizontal. In other words, there's no curvature. And when you have no curvature, this is equivalent to saying that your radius of curvature is going to infinity, and therefore that your v squared over radius of curvature approaches zero. So we can cancel that entire uh, component out, which leaves us with the following p1 plus rho g z1 is equal to p2, which we've stated is equal to zero, plus rho g z2, or in other words, P1 is equal to rho g z2 minus z1. Note, this is the same solution that we get if we were to apply the theory of hydrostatics or fluid statics. Now, why is that? The fluid isn't static. We're dealing with a flowing set of streamlines, correct? Well, the reason is that it relies in this, uh, this notion of canceling out this v squared over r term, right? Uh, because there is no curvature, that indicates, by extension, that there is no radial acceleration. In other words, there is no pressure imbalance sufficient to cause, or no force imbalance sufficient to cause fluid acceleration normal to streamlines. At the same time, between sections A and B, the water level isn't changing. There's no constriction or, or, or volute in the flow that causes the streamwise speed to change. So the flow at points 1 and 2 
is steady, not only in an Eulerian sense, but also in a Lagrangian sense. A given fluid particle is not experiencing any acceleration. So if we were to put a coordinate system, right, and we were to put that coordinate system at point one and allow it to move with the direction or with the velocity of the flow, then what we would have in that coordinate system is a fluid statics problem. All of the local velocities would go to zero and we would get again this solution. So because there are no fluid Lagrangian accelerations, it behaves identically to a fluid statics problem. All right, moving on to part B, right? The pressure difference between points three and four, those lying vertically in line at the center of this circular hump between section C and D. So writing out our equation again, P plus rho G Z plus rho integral V squared over the radius of curvature in the normal direction equal to a constant. All right, what simplifications can we make here? Well, once again, right, because point four lies at the free surface, we can go ahead and assume that P4 is equal to zero. Gauge pressure, of course, the absolute pressure would be, you know, 101 kilopascals or 14.7 PSI, but gauge pressure at the atmosphere is equal to zero. As well as, right, we need to do something with these integral terms. Now, the easy, there are a number of ways in which we could approach this, but the easiest way is by recognizing that at points three and four, right, the normal vector, which always points inward towards the center of curvature, is equal to negative z, right? That coordinate direction, or those, those are uh, collinear coordinates, but pointing in, the, in opposite directions. So if we make that substitution, P plus rho g z plus rho integral v squared over r times negative dz equals constant. Then that at least appears to be a, uh, a somewhat uh, friendlier integral because we're dealing in coordinates in which we're already speaking, right? We're, we're, we're working in Cartesian coordinates. So um, let's go ahead and write this, right, this equivalence, this constancy represented between points three and four. So P3 plus rho G Z3 plus rho integral. Now this integral, right, it's ordinarily written without limits. Um, but I would contend that we are better off writing it as such, right, the integral from some arbitrary constant. It doesn't matter what, what you want. We could write it, you know, from zero uh, if we so choose. Um, constant to z3 of v squared r dz is equal to p4 plus rho g z4 plus rho times the integral. Again, same arbitrary constant at the lower limit up to z4 this time, v squared over r negative dz. And let's go ahead and make those cancellations, right? P4 is equal to zero, so we'll go ahead and strike that out now. So consolidating our terms, right? We can solve for P3 is the following. P3 is equal to rho G Z4 minus Z3. There's our hydrostatics term, right? But we're also left with this integral of rho, this time because we're subtracting the, uh, the integration from a constant to z3 from the integration from constant to z4, what we're left with is the integration from z3 to z4 of the same integrand, v squared over r times negative dz. Let's go ahead and take that negative and move it out front. dz minus. So what does this do to the pressure at point three relative to the hydrostatic term that we already wrote down? Uh, well, let's go ahead and look at this, right? V squared 
by necessity, always has to be constant. Even if V is negative, right? Squaring it makes it positive. R, as well, can't be negative. It makes no sense to have a negative radius. Z3, right, is smaller than Z4. So integration from Z3 to Z4 of a positive quantity is going to yield a positive result. So, in other words, this is always greater than zero. So, P3 is our hydrostatic term minus some quantity that represents our, our radial acceleration, right? In other words, the pressure at point three is going to be smaller in the presence of this flow curvature than it would be if this were a hydrostatics problem. And the reason for this is because, well, you know, the pressure between points one and two might vary hydrostatically. Um, if we want the flow to curve and stay attached to the circular hump over which it has to flow, right? Uh, that requires that the pressures towards the center of curvature be smaller, right? The pressure increases with depth, but it decreases towards the center of curvature because that decrease is necessary to divert the flow from a straight path. And that wraps up our solution for flow across streamlines. Again, uh, we haven't taken this any further because we don't know the behavior of V as a function of Z. Okay, we know R is a function of Z because if we were given um, if we were given R to one of these points, then we could go ahead and solve that just geometrically. But if we're not given V as a function of Z, then we can't actually integrate it explicitly on Z. So this is a purely, uh, you know, this is a conceptual and symbolic uh, solution to the problem. But we can learn something about the magnitudes of pressures when there's flow curvature present relative to hydrostatics cases.